Hey everybody, welcome back. I am the Gerbil, and this is Viewer Question Episode 3 for Sept... That's 6. Wait, no, that's 5. I can math. For September, I don't know, whatever the date is. Thanks for tuning in today. Sorry I haven't been around for the last week or so. If you've been following me on Discord, you know that I've been on a uh, week-long trip. I took 53, 54 ninth graders to the ancient capital city of Xi'an, where we saw the, the, the world-famous terracotta warrior dig sites uh, and all kinds of stuff. Jump into my Discord, go to the uh, my adopted home channel, and you can probably see about 80 absolutely beautiful photos from Xi'an that will probably change your perspective on what you think life in China really is like because it's not like the news. Anyway, I digress. Let's get started, shall we? Before we get to the questions, as always, I want to talk about the results of the YouTube survey. I asked everyone, should I stop my fir current farms for Afra and Cal? Um, I was just kind of sidetracking this anyway. It's not a focus. And go for Bad Batch. It's funny. My, my account is like 10 million GP, and that's my Bad Batch. Yeah, I know. It's crazy, huh? And you know what? The vote was tied. So thank you, because I'm going to not farm Bad Batch, which is awkward because they are such an amazing team uh, even all the way up to kyber one they are great and they're relatively easy to farm but there's just too much going on in the game right now uh, obviously gl leia uh, dr afra still who came out last january so yeah kind of behind anyway um i haven't posted a i didn't post a, a survey for last week but i've got one i'm gonna post tonight so jump into discord and vote if you want now it's question time i got a bunch of them so i may speed talk if i do i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry but got a lot to get through today okay lots to get through today and i gotta get back to work tomorrow <laughs> all right so question number one from Draugr. i hope i'm saying that right where's the best spot to apply their first couple Omicrons and Zetas? So uh, Draugr is following kind of my my quirky farming path that kind of takes you into profundity. Starting the game with uh, Admiral Radis and Mon Mothu squads that leads you into CLS squads, which leads you into profundity eventually, using Home 1 as your primary offensive fleet for a while until, of course, you get the profundity. In that path, as many will point out, you definitely do need to unlock the um, the Zeta ability from the the weekly events, whatever it is that needs Grand uh, Grand Moff Tarkin and the Executrix. And some people will tell you go Geos for that, which is great because they're very very free to play. I actually say no, go Bounty Hunters because the Bounty Hunters get you the Hans Million Falcon. And Bounty Hunters get you Chewbacca, which fills out your CLS squad as you go this route. So um, if you're going that pathway then my recommendation is to make sure you have Han shoots first because that is just a pivotal, I mean, that is a game-changing ability for the CLS squad and that allows you early, early game to throw CLS into Arena or Grand Arena in any squad, not CLS, but Han Solo, into honestly any squad and effectively just stun and, and um, remove a target that's threatening so that your team can get you know out and do whatever they're going to do. Uh, on the dark side, you said you already have Darth Vader, which is great. I think you absolutely have to have Palpatine's lead there to go with that, uh, Emperor of the Galactic Republic. Between those two characters, you can uh, duo in GAC uh, Geonosians, which you'll run into quite a lot. Um, just make sure your speeds are faster. But then back to the Adrad team leading you towards Profundity, must have the uh, transmission from Scarif Zeta on Admiral Radis, and I would recommend the first Omicron there, and I do believe, double check that it's a GAC Omicron. Um, it, it makes his team way, way more challenging to deal with in GAC. And again, early game, very few people are going to have a counter to that Admiral Radis team. My alt is just passing the 3 million mark, uh, and I'm still getting holds with this team, even though Kyle is Relic 5, but the rest of them are like still gear 9 to 11. Uh, my Admiral Radis is still 6 stars, even at 3 million GP, and it gets holds all the time. It's remarkable. Next question. This comes from Christian. Well, I'm getting Gialea, and my guild needs an R7 Logre. Good for your guild. <laughs> Rise of the Empire, right? Who should be the fifth? Okay, so this is Darth Revan. Uh, down below and you can see the effectiveness of the team. My go-to Ewok squad right now is Chirpa, Elder, Logray, Nisa, and Wicket. And also you may notice that something is different about Nisa that wasn't like that 
last week. There was a very quiet update that went out and I plan to have a whole video about that very soon because Nisa is a lot more effective today than she was seven days ago. I'm not joking, seriously. Um, but this is my go-to. This squad, uh, and this is an arena, so no Omicron in effect here on Chirpa or, or Nisa. But this squad can drop Revan, Darth Revan, uh, CLS with ease. It, it can drop the Inquisitors, not not Reva, excuse me, get some hiccups here. Um, it's very, 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 very powerful, very diverse, and a challenge to deal with if, if your opponent underestimates it for sure. Um, now, is it going to consistently beat Darth Revan? No. Um, but yes, it, it definitely can handle and punch way above um, what most people think for Ewoks. So if you're going to go for GL Leia, um, then you are going to take Wicked, Sherpa, and um, Nisa up to mid high relics. So if you're going to go Logray for your guild, there's your four. I would throw in Ewok Elder 100, 100, 100, 100, 100, 100%, um, because Elder is a turn meter train and you will lose Ewok still, just as we've lost Logray, but that's not a problem because we're going to revive him right here in three, two, one, revive. That was amazing timing. Next question. Um, for the home one fleets, can I do with Y wing instead of Bigs? I don't want to gear up a bad tune. Uh, no, short answer is no. Uh, you absolutely need Bigs on your starting lineup, uh, not Y wing. There are there are definitely people who will tell you otherwise, but no. Uh, Hans Millennium Falcon's basic applies target lock. Bigs's basic applies target lock. Whenever you gain target lock. Uh, Biggs is going to taunt and recover protection. The Falcon's going to call and assist every time it uses its basic. Home one calls assists on its basic and its second and its special. Um, the Raven's Claw is going to call assist every time you're attacking a target with target lock. Uh, Biston applies target lock as your opening move, and every time you attack out of turn, home one's applying healing or health uh, protection up. So between all that just perpetual assisting and perpetual target lock spreading, Biggs stays alive a lot. The Y-Wing is a great ship, but it's also a dead-end ship. Seriously, as the meta evolves and like Leviathan is out there and everything, you cannot improve the Y-Wing. You get it to seven stars and you're done. Conversely, while Biggs is not a good character, you are actually could, if you really, really wanted to, take him up to R7, R8, R9, potentially R10 down the road. His ship has much more longevity and viability until CG fundamentally changes the way the game works. Also, uh, Executor, as I recall, can just ignore uh, crewless ships. So yeah, there's that. Uh, it cannot ignore Biggs. Or maybe that's profundity that it does it. I can't remember. Anyway, uh, check out my other videos. Seriously, no, Biggs is way, way better with Home One. Uh, next question uh, from LouisBot9002. Um, turns out it's not a question. It's just a big thumbs up. Thank you. I love feeling the love. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, next question we got from Gungan. In my humble opinion, what do I think about Separatists? And you're asking for a serious answer. Serious answer. I don't like Separatists. Um, I'm not a big fan of the Clone War, and Separatists currently do not lead to any GL yet. There, there's no in-game thing that they lead to, but they do provide uh, some of the best current Territory War teams with Droidica General Grie Droidica Omicron on General Grievous team, Droidica Poggle on Geonosians. Geonosians are super friendly, free to play, easy to get out there. So like you can get some fleets pretty quickly with them, whether it's um, General Grievous's fleet or even a Tarkin with the, the, the Geonosian Starfighters. Um, and that's a quick, easy one to develop, whether it's offense or defense. It's a decent fleet, but it's not going to be that effective late game. Now, Grievous's ship is good at all stages of the game, so that's a good one. But it's a slower farm to get his actual ship. With that said, you may notice I got a picture of Trench there, and I'm saying GL ship in 2025. I'm not joking about that. Um, I've, I've got a whole long thought process about this. Hope to do a similar video to my GL Leia prediction very soon. I'm not going to spoil what's coming next summer. I'm pretty sure I know. And then I think the summer after that, we're going to get Admiral Trench in and a separatist fleet meta. Um, so I think it's I think it's two summers away. 
But, uh, I mean, this game is a lifelong commitment, so go ahead and start farming if you want. Any chance I could make a slight comparison video on turn meter generating teams? Like, yeah, I could. Um, don't think I will, though, but I definitely could. Bears all the way, that's my opinion. Actually, no. Uh, Imperial Troopers is absolutely going to win, I think, a turn meter train gain game. Um, but there's so many of them, it's really hard to... I mean, like, Emperor Palpatine with Star Killer is a turn meter train. Um, Geonosians, of course. Mamothma, of course. Ewoks, of course. Um, there, there's just... A, a CLS can be one, depending on the situation. So it, that's, that's like a really, really challenging one. But I'll think about it. Uh, and it... And it T Shorto, excuse me, I have absolutely no idea how to pronounce that. Hey, top three characters in the game I'd like to see soloing capabilities. I did kind of answer this last time. The question actually is different. Previous question was who deserves an Omicron solo ability like Wampa and Fulcrum? This one is who do I want to see? These are the three. If I was had the authority, I would give one to Jedi Knight Luke. Obviously, think about him trashing all those uh, uh, dark troopers in the Mandalorian. I would give one to Ewok Scout because poor boy ha or girl has nowhere in this game really to thrive. And I just think it's kind of fun to uh, imagine a um, marauder, uh, carnivorous, uh, alpha predator Ewok just out there stealthily dropping your party like in the Predator movie. I mean, think about it in Return of the Jedi. Um, Han Solo, Chewie, R2, C-3PO, and Luke, none of them realized they were surrounded by 40 Ewoks. So I think the Ewoks are greatly underrepresented in this game. And that would just be fun. It would just be fun. And then, of course, Chopper, because he is absolutely a psycho psychopathic homicidal murderer. Seriously, I, if you really pay attention and you keep the, like, the body count like going as you watch the Rebel series, Chopper kills a lot of people. Like there's literally one episode where Chopper only has to disable an enemy capital ship, instead he blows it up. <laughs> it's like, you just killed a few thousand people there, bro, when all you had to do was like, stop its engines. Anyway, moving on. Um, Joseph W, regarding Phoenix, Sabine. Um, They've, you've got a situation where Sabine is faster, and yet, against Inquisitors, Rex always goes first. Why is it? Well, it's two reasons. Um, Rex here has this ability that says that whenever uh, a clone trooper or Phoenix ally is inflicted with a debuff, Rex gains 5% turn meter. So, he is both Phoenix and uh, clone trooper, which means I think he gains 10% turn meter whenever he's debuffed, but I could be mistaken. Regardless, if you're going up against Grand Inquisitor or Reva in particular, um, they have in their patience ability, it says, inflict all enemies with a stack of purge at the start of the encounter. So before turn, like before that, that turn, the speed uh, comes into play to determine who goes first, Rex will immediately have 5% turn meter or 10% depending on how this works for that stack of purge, which means he is therefore going to go ahead of uh, a faster Sabine. It's kind of cool, isn't it? I mean, if it's Reva, then Rex should be starting the battle with, I think, five or six stacks of purge. I don't remember her kit, but let's say it's five. That's, that's potentially 50% turn meter right off the bat, which I think is how the Phoenix Squad is able to handle beating uh, Reva so well. No, oh, interesting. Yeah, thanks for the purge. Moving on, shall we? Uh, Sang Asura. Hey, Gerbil, how do you find time for all this stuff? You know what? I'm kind of short on time right now making this video. Let me get back to you. Lastly, uh, are you part of the CG team? Absolutely not. Um, CG's standing motto, I imagine if I could walk into their firm, someplace on the door it would say, like, Capital Games, striving for competence. This game could last another 10 years or, or, or more, but I really feel that they just perpetually release things with bugs after bug after bug, and it's just disgusting. Anyway, folks, we gotta move on. No, I am absolutely not affiliated with Capital Games. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, yeah, next question, here we go, comes from Mara Jade. Uh, how could I make an argument for using Ezra instead of Sabine when Sabine does the stagger? Well, it comes down to this. It depends very much, I think, in the game mode and your play style. Um, I am slowly coming around to believing that Sabine is by far the 
maybe not let's not say by far yes by far the better character in certain conditions especially against like lord vader and reva with that said there is still a very, very good home for Ezra if you're going for Gia Leia. If you recently watched Arnold's video where he showcased all the different team comps that he's been playing with, his two favorite characters for the fourth and fifth spot with Gia Leia were Ezra and Old Ben. He had Ezra hitting for like 250,000 damage and stuff. So if you have geared up your Ezra and Sabine, and you're going for Gia Leia, you've got a home for both now. Absolutely, put, put Sabine here, put Ezra, for now, we can try in GLA and see how that rolls out. Um, lots more to come on that one. I still like Ezra because of the utility of the turn meter passing and the targeted assist. Um, and there was another one, I can't remember what it does. He's got three abilities there. Um, but it's hard to say. Also, I like his ramping damage more, but that's just me. Okay, um, from CY83, our crash, basically, is CR45H. So I have doubt on the starting lineup for home one. I see I'm much more effective going with Biggs, Falcon, and Razor Crest with Biston's reinforcement. So the problem is, as you can admit, your Biston is only gear 11, and that's, that's just insufficient. Biston needs to go first, and you're only going to get there by getting him faster and scare for Rebel Pathfinder faster. In the kit is a bonus 25% speed. You need that to be faster. You need to get your speed up to about the 198 to 2 something. Biston is among the very fastest ships in the game, and when he goes first, he target locks the enemy attacker. That triggers taunt on Biggs, gives uh, Biggs, uh, or gives Razor Crest. Foresight, so that whether Biggs goes next or Razor Crest goes next, you target the attacker. Biggs would reapply uh, target lock, and also in Biston's kit right there, the second line, target lock, whenever you target with someone, an ally and you're taking an advantage and 20 35% turn meter. So you get a turn meter bonus going, you can bypass the enemy taunts with the Raven's Claw or any ship with foresight, and every time you target lock an enemy, you're gaining foresight somewhere. So I mean it's like it just like it it just like catapults out a chain reaction of events then when the falcon reinforces and it should be your first reinforcement um, it enters the battlefield giving all of your allies foresight which that foresight through the claw lets you ignore taunt so that you can just attack any ship you want it calls all allies to assist which if you've got razor uh, if you got the claw biston and biggs out there and this comes in everybody attacks you're going to get five attacks out of it because the falcon will attack calling another assist every one of those attacks applies protection up from home one um, they all have foresight then that means on their next turn, they're going to ignore Taunt. So basically, the, the RI should just kill somebody. It should be almost like Commander Ahsoka Tana coming in, insta-kill somebody, and then ignoring Taunt to kill the next target. Generally, when the Falcon enters is where you just literally clear the board except for the enemy Taunt tanks. So there's your problem. You need more gear. Sorry. Okay, moving on. Uh, hey, Gerbil from Brewskies. Um, the Captain Rex works very well on um, on Mothma team. What do I think of this composition? I think the Captain Rex will work very well on a lot of teams because he's just such a good character. His AOE is just awesome, applying tenacity down, uh, and then all the other stuff. But nah, because like if you really look at the kit, everything I've underlined in red here is abilities you're going to lose. These are all things that apply specifically to Phoenix and Rebels. Hey, Leo, I'm recording right now, okay? I'll be out in a second. Close the door, okay? My kid. So these are all abilities that you're going to lose, uh, and I think it's just not worth it. Um, I think also later game, you need to stick with the core five. All right, next question. Uh, okay, oh man, this is a long one. So I didn't quite read this one as closely as, or maybe I did, and I don't quite understand. I get the feeling from this question, uh, Traverse Maximus, that you're talking about trying to gear, like as you're gearing up characters like to unlock CLS, you're taking them all up to gear 12. And I would say absolutely, please don't do that. No, 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 do not. Like Farm Boy Luke, I don't think he needs to be past gear eight, as well as most of the CLS requirements. They don't need to go past gear eight or nine. Like if you're, when you're unlocking Thrawn, you don't need to take your Phoenix past gear eight or nine, unless you're gonna go the Rexy route, then yeah, 
bump them up, my friend. What you really need to do is identify your long-term goals. And this sounds so weird for a video game, but identify your long-term goals. So like if you're going for Jedi Master Luke, you need to look backwards at what you need to get there. So like in the short run, you can say, oh, I'm going for CLS. Okay, well, CLS means you need bounty hunters. So gear them up at the minimum to unlock Chewbacca and the Falcon. Uh, but then to finish out that CLS squad, you need R2D2, or sorry, C3PO. So gear up your Ewoks to a minimum level to unlock C3PO. Then that takes you into the next step to get that Jedi Master Luke, which will be Jedi Knight Luke, right? So minimum your requirements for that. Then when you get to the Jedi Master Luke phase, then, you know, those are pretty clear requirements, like certain relic levels. Those are the characters you take up to the relics. After you achieved your goal, then I would say go back and finish out your teams. As as, uh, as uh, News Too Good would say, finish your farms, right? <laughs> uh, let's see here. Next question. Uh, and this one's going to come to us from, oh man, look at those animations, cutesy wootsy, uh, from some random skeleton. Can Mon Mothma work just fine with leftover rebels? Early game, yes. Mid game, maybe. Late game, no. Late game, you really need this five for the turn meter train. And when I say late game, I mean at least like the six million GP and up. You're going to really need to be around here. Um, the early game, when you're like sub two million, you're in, the, you're, you're in like the lower two tiers of Grand Arena. Yeah, you can probably throw whatever you want in there if you have the uh the 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 Zetas on Mon Mothma, but sincerely, you're not going to get a lot of utility out of them with just any random rebel fighters. Um, Pow and Scout, Hoth Scout, are your turn meter drivers. Caradun will strip turn meter away from the enemy, and Kyle is going to be your your like attacker who does the vast majority of your damage. So this is probably what you want to aim for. Okay, long, long, long one. Um, this is similar to the fleet before, underlined. I just found out that my bigs doesn't survive long enough. And again, here's why. You you say that uh, bigs is gear 11, three pieces away from gear 12. That's absolutely 100% why. When you're fighting against negotiator, as you outline in here, um, bigs, just to, actually, I would expect him to die. Um, you should be able to beat a negotiator fleet well above you in terms of relic levels, but you need a decently relic uh, Biston crew, which in, in my opinion means like uh, Relic 3 probably. You really, really are going to want eventually a Relic 5 Biston, uh, or not Biston, but Biggs, if you want him to survive. Otherwise, he probably is going to die. Um, and... Um, Oh, at the very bottom, you had a question in there. Does uh, does Biggs apply taunt, which makes him auto, or does he apply target lock when he re-enters the battlefield, uh, applying taunt on himself? The answer is yes, he does. Anyway, I have some really, really in-depth videos on these rebel fleets and the turn orders and whatever. If you just go to YouTube, search the gerbil rebel fleet, you'll find like a list of like eight or nine videos I've done on home one um, and battle strategies and stuff. But yeah, yeah, check it out, please, because I think you'll I think you'll really, really get a lot of great information out of that. All right. Next up, we got Draugr here. Draugr is saying, can Thai Bomber be defeated with a home one fleet early game? Answer again is yes. Check out this video right here. There's a link to it. I'll try to put that in the description below. But yes, it can. You want Biston Biggs and Raven's Claw to start home one. Sorry, uh, Hans Millennium Falcon as your first RI. And um, it is fairly um, RNG based because you have a tenacity versus potency check when you're trying to remove the turn meter. But if you've got your Kyle up to at least about Relic 3, it should almost be 100% of the time. Um, so it's actually pretty easy to do. Just check out the video. I think you'll you'll like it. Next, we got one from Kume. I think I'm saying that right. Um, is there any alternative for Akbar Omicron teams uh, now that Han, Stormtrooper, Rolo, Lando is likely going with Sana and R2 is going with GL Leia? Yes, my friends, fish and ladies. Um, he really likes the ladies he does. Put in Fulcrum. Fulcrum is amazing in there. Like, absolutely amazing. And if you apply the Omicron, she can then become a solo versus, like, Omicron Phasma in, uh, in Territory Wars and a couple other teams, actually. Quite good. Um, Christian asked me, hey, Gerbil, am I okay that Wicked is not in Leia's kit? And I'm like, no, I'm actually not. I have planned to do a whole video about that. I'm actually really really upset about this for reasons that go way beyond even my personal hope to play more Ewok. Um, 
I have a fundamental problem with what CG is doing to the game, um, and it and it actually demotivates me from playing. But, and I am being like holding onto a thread here that Ewok, sorry Ewok, that Wicket may get a kit retouch. If they were to add the one line, this is all they need, something similar to this. If GLA is in the leader spot at the start of battle, Wicked gains the Rebel tag and replace all instances of Ewok in his kit with Rebel. He would become 100% viable and he would be really, really, really awesome in that team. I mean, imagine his AOE, poof, 50% turn meter to the team. It may actually be OP and maybe that's why they're not doing it. But we can hope, right? We can hope. So goodbye, goodbye, dreams, dreams are going away. It's so sad. All right, we only got a couple questions left. Two more. With Leia, this comes from Ethan Solo. With Leia now being in the game, what's my plan for getting Scout and Drogon? And the answer is I'm not giving them money unless I can help it right now. I'm not happy about what they've done for, for a couple things. I have some big problems with Leia's kit too. She seems really, really powerful and fun to play, but there's some big issues in there. Anyway, um, weekly shipments and featured shipment. That's it, yeah until they become farmable. But yeah, I will probably be buying them with weekly shipments and uh, feeder shipments. So I'm gonna have to slow down my farm for some gears and stuff. So I'm like not refreshing some nodes as much, but yeah, whatever, it is what it is. And then the last question of the day from LouisBot9002 again, help! The executor has shown up in my shard and I can't beat it with home one. And I'm like, yeah, okay, nah, good luck. In, in reality, yes, you can still beat it. It is very RNG, and it's probably going to be, at best, uh, a 1 in 5 um, win rate. And that's assuming you get the turn order right and things just go your way. Um, I do have some videos, again, you can search for it, Home 1 versus Executor, Home 1, Fleet, the Gerbil, whatever you want. Um, and, and I have been able to beat some like full-on Relic 8 Executor fleets with Home 1. But it is an absolute uphill challenge, and your best bet is to convince the people, like reach out to the guy in your or girl in your fleet shard, and ask them if they don't mind just changing the fleet around so that everyone else can get their play payout. The other thing, like like you know, let them climb and then say, hey, after you got your payout, can you can you respectfully please 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 be cool about it, um, uh, and, and just ask them, you know, hey, just for the benefit of the community, do you mind rotating out your fleet when you're not climbing? so that everyone else can get their shot at first. Also, you could go the sneaky route, I guess, which they'll figure out, and tell them like, hey, hey, did you know the three attacker lineup is way, way better? That's right, take out Houndstooth, use it as your first RI, because Home One has a much better win rate against the triple attacker lineup. I mean, you can totally destroy one or two of the attackers before uh, the, the Houndstooth gets a turn, or is summoned through reinforcement. But, hmm, that's not the nicest way to do it. Anyway, folks, thanks for watching. Um, I really, really, really hope you have enjoyed this video. Um, if so, please, you know the drill. Give me a like, give me a thumbs up, and I will catch you later. Thanks. Bye-bye.